That was a lot of fun. Now everyone is disappearing. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad. In this assemblage behind me are dealers waiting to get into Hall D where we are having the Rose City Vintage Market this weekend. Yesterday was our first day, it got off to a great start. I got to be on the local CBS news feed and a lot of people came and that was a lot of fun. Now everyone is disappearing and going in because we're getting get ready. We're opening in an hour. I'm gonna try to film before we open because I think we'll be too busy for me to do it afterwards. All right, here we go. So we're seeing things on the second day of the show before the show is open. A lot of the dealers have come in and are starting to open their booths. Some of them are not here yet, so they keep their booths blocked off. But wow, this one's got some pretty great stuff. Let's broaden this out. And you can see the whole booth. When you see all of this together, it just looks like a fun rec room you could just move right into. The carousel horse is pretty cool. It looks like it's got some real age to the way that it's made. It's got glass eyes. It's hand painted. They've got 2,800 of it. And they say that this one is a uh, Charles Carmel creation. So this is going to be one of the artist ones, but some of them are really neat and very spendy. That tombstone clock with the neon is completely original and still works. That's unusual. They've got 1,700 on that jolly good bread. I mean, of course, the prices on this sort of thing have really gone up, but it's because there's such demand. And finding good pieces in good condition with old advertising is not so easy. This guy is a really good dealer. He's been doing this for as long as I've been around the business. And he's just got some really fun stuff. Tam with Jan, it's lanolized. Look at that down there. I'm going to zoom in on her. Chance and Beach stuff is really, really popular. I have a friend who's an 85-year-old antique dealer now, but she was one of the Jansen Jan girls back in the day. Wow, look at all this. So this is Italian toll work from the 1960s yeah. and 70s, and you're selling it for an estate. And what beautiful pieces, the, the lilies, that's gorgeous, that huge lily yeah. branch for and 200. It lights up. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, Yeah, a lot of this is lighting and wall sconces. These are gorgeous pieces. 125 for the one up at the right and 95 for that one. I mean, I think your prices are very fair and this is such a chance to have a big statement piece to put in a wall and decorate around. And very collectible, a lot of people really interested. And then I see that you've got some of the table lamps as well. What a fun thing, look at the hydrangea. That is so neat. And she's willing to wholesale them. Well, if I know a decorator who comes in, I, okay. uh, that's pretty amazing because uh, the prices are very fair at retail. So, yes, I would think a wholesale dealer would be thrilled to get this. If I had the wall space, I'd be tempted. <laughs> and here are the Whitakers, and they have fantastic little figurines. 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s. They really do Christmas up. I like the Noel, but look how much fun Sam is having. He's doing cartwheels. He's standing on his head. These pieces are getting harder and harder to find in good condition. You've got the Stife Santa Claus there. You've got a Nodder. This is just a really fun case. Hi. Hello! And they are really nice people and they get really cool stuff and it's just really fun to show yeah. this. The Occupied Japan Santa on the sled is 75. This one is 35 with the pipe cleaner. This is what these things run now. They're just hard to find. This dealer has really amazing boudoir items. She's got all sorts of neat little dresser boxes. These ink wells are really great. The figural one there playing the flute in the porcelain is $125. That would have sold for twice as much at the peak of inkwell collecting. So that's really a very good deal for a figural piece. The little metal ones are always popular, it seems, with the Art Nouveau style. And then these appear to have a Champlevé enameled French decoration on the top. Look at the detail there. Aren't those pretty? You can see why people back in the day spent a lot of money on impressive desk items to make themselves seem like a big wig when you came into their office. And they are absolutely collectible because of their beauty now. I like the little Malachite dresser box too there.
And then she's got a whole bunch of atomizers. Now she's got the balls off of them because a lot of times the rubber balls end up being very hard and having to be replaced. You can get acceptable replacements now. And so you can restore these back to being functional. Really pretty ones here from the Hollywood Regency period, 1950s and 60s. And you see prices in the $75 to $125 range on them now. These are really cute portraits. These were done in the 1890s and early 1900s. And they were made to hang on the wall or sometimes to cover a flu vent. More atomizers. Devilbus is the big name that I look for in these. They were made in France. They were made in Czechoslovakia. And some of them were made here in the United States as well. And then we've got that very sweet group of recumbent women laying on the beach waiting for some appropriate suitor to come and notice their pulchritude. These are really cute. The less detailed ones are usually Japanese. The more detailed ones are German and are the more collectible and expensive of the group. And you can see prices as high as 125 to 150 on some of these. One thing that we see at the antique shows in Portland are really good displays of Native American basketry, weavings, and in this case, a whole lot of concho belts and some wonderful silver pieces. He's got the ones with the huge silver medallions. He's got ones with turquoise inlay. You see prices starting about 475 for the more elaborate ones. Prices in the 200 range for some of the less elaborate ones, but they're just beautiful and very collectible. These woven bags are primarily from the plain states, and they are just beautiful, and they are very expensive, but look at the amazing condition. Most of these are 1930s or earlier. They all use vegetable dyes, none of this aniline dye that they use in the new ones. That's a great way to be able to tell, and they have a real softness compared to the new ones. These are just really amazing, beautiful pieces you don't see very frequently, and this guy has been a specialist for many years. And so that's why he's able to put these big prices on them, because he's getting things that other people are not seeing, including this really great hat. And yes, that is a hat. It's a basket hat. These were used by the Plateau and High Plains Indians and also in Northern California. This, I believe, to be one of the various Apache tribes, and again, that's an early piece. When you see that darkening in the patina, that could be pre-tourist. That could be back into the 19th century. So he's just got a wonderful selection. Now we have a dealer who is doing kitchen right. Boy, and they've got good stuff. They have the Pyrex out of the 1960s and 70s that is wildly popular now. They have some really great jadeite and in fact I just sold this piece yesterday and I my set of bowls as well they have theirs priced at 55 mine was 45 so I guess that's why mine sold first but they've got really good pieces here and some of the ones you don't see so often these smaller cups with the shape sides are different than the D handle here these are the C handle notice the difference one shaped like a D one's shaped like a C the C handle are more expensive the little egg cups there, $38 each. Those are hard to find. And then this one is more expensive because it's a flat bottom, which I think I can show you here, as opposed to the recessed bottom with the rim. So varieties matter where glass collecting is concerned. And this fellow has a wonderful selection of really nicely restored old radios. They're just beautiful. I am going to have to talk over the music because I'm sure it's still copyrighted, but he's got really great stuff and he does such a good job. I like this one with the green tuning by Westinghouse from 1939, and it is just beautiful. He does all the restoration of the cabinets if needed. This one's priced at 400 It's just a beauty. It's got the short wave. And look at this one with the fantastic color. This is priced at 265 It's an admiral, but look at that dial. And speaking of the 1940s, well, there's General Douglas MacArthur in a composition doll, ready to give you a salute. Douglas MacArthur was so popular, even at the time that he was fired by Harry Truman, that he ended up having a ticker tape parade in New York after he was let go by the army. 
Here are a couple of rubber cars. This one is a large race car in the old design here, and you're going to see the name of the rubber company here. This one's a more obscure company. We usually see things by Auburn and Sun Rubber. We don't see as many by this company, and that's a nice big piece. Hard to find in good condition. They tended to crack with age. This very handsome clock has the Native American woman in the headdress at the top. This is done for Mitchell Vance and Company in New York. It's going to date right around 1900. Look at these figures on the side with the helmets. They look like conquistadors of some sort, or actually Trojans. What a beautiful piece that is. Now, I wanted you to see these lest you think that Wade figurines are just those little things you got out of tea boxes. The things in tea boxes were to get you started collecting, but then Wade had an entire line of items that they sold, including these larger figures. A lot of these herald from English legend and storytelling. This one's the Lady of the Lake, for example. She's priced at $45, so there are collector series for Wade's and there are definitely people who are still collecting the collector series for wades so don't be fooled into thinking that these are just two and three dollar items some wade porcelain figures are actually fairly spendy for their size and we'll show you a few character figures here as well because they did everyone from alice in wonderland to tom and jerry these are pretty desirable and you will see them coming out of collections now uh, this came out after Marilyn died, but, and I usually say don't buy things after the celebrity is gone, but these were a bunch of photos done in 1962 by Bert Stern shortly before she died, and they weren't released until after her death. There was a lot of controversy about them, and it took a long time for them to be allowed to be printed again, so they are hard to find, and 225 is the price on those. I said, never go, oh, I don't have any competition on records. A lot of the other shows, boy, I have some real competition. I'm actually really surprised there weren't more records here, yes, because it does seem like it is exactly the type of thing that people are collecting now, but you've got a lot of things that seem like they're in step with a younger collector that's starting to get interested, so this is really fun. Okay, I've got to show this because Julia has the most awesome tattoo and my cousin is a huge Simpsons fan. Wow, that's so amazing. Yeah, there's Marge and Homer and the kids and part of the history. Mr. Bergstrom. Oh my gosh. Santa's little helper. So great. Blinky the three-eyed fish. Wow, look at the detail on that. That's so cool. Kang and Kodos. Yes. Snowball one who got run over. Oh, I remember poor Snowball. He's in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, that was so fun. And she bought my big fountain swan base that I didn't even get to show her. This is a poster for a concert from 1990 signed by the original poster artist in the lower corner. And that's the reason it's worth $250. These old concert posters are very collectible with the new generation. Hard to believe that Soundgarden opened for Danzig. Hmm. Stephanie from Thrifting Adventures, she's taking off the mask okay. so we get the big smile. Yes, aw, that's so great. And the Mount St. Helens shirt. There we go, there I we loved go. it. Yeah, Mount St. Helens. <laughs> I know someone is doing a book on Mount St. Helens collectibles, oh, awesome. so yeah, it's going to be fun. This is the era of new collectors. A lot of Michael Jackson fans are in the prime collecting age now, and here's a Michael Jackson AM radio. Never heard of such a thing. This would have been put out probably right about 1982, because he's got the bow tie like he wore on the Off the Wall album. Now these two are pottery craft, and one of them is shown in my book, and one of them is actually not the one in the back here. Robert Maxwell is the one who came up with the overlapping glaze designs, and then a couple of years later when they actually introduced the line, they did various shapes. So I think this was a Maxwell shape. The one in the back I think was not. I think the shape was done a little bit later. You don't see that size or shape very often. If you ever watch the show Three's Company, there is a period of time where they have a big Robert Maxwell inspired pottery craft base on one of their shelves. The big one here you see is priced at 225 people. Thanks to somebody writing a book. <laughs> that was me have really caught on to this stuff, so it's not cheap anymore. Fun Atomic Era bark cloth. I really like these patterns with all of the wild 
Sputnik y designs and things that were shaped like television sets. I remember this sign when I was a kid. This was still up. It's from the 1960s, but they were still using it when we moved to Bremerton, Washington, where the USS Missouri was the main tourist attraction for a very long time until it was refurbished and then shipped off elsewhere. Also from my childhood, these candlestick phones were a 1970s version of the original candlestick phones from the 1920s, and the bicentennial one is a particularly fun model at $55. And since we showed you some really fun Christmas, I wanted to show you another case of really fun Halloween. Halloween is the most collectible holiday other than the Christmas holiday, and boy, the decor is just so cool. Look at these paper mache jack-o'-lanterns with the happy faces. There's lots of noisemakers. This stuff's really hard to find in good condition. Prices are not cheap. Even a simple noisemaker is usually in the $18 to $20 range. Jack-o'-lanterns can be over 100 depending on how detailed and how old. Halloween was not a kid's celebration until about the 1920s. This gout stool is a lot of fun. It's shaped like a horseshoe, and these would have been used in commercial places. A lot of people suffered from gout. It had to do with the body not being able to process some of the rich foods and some of the other things that they were dealing with in their environment. So you saw these in a lot of places as courtesy pieces. This dealer has a lot of arts and crafts era furniture from about 1900. And this has been such a collectible area of furnishings for quite a long time. It really was discovered in the 1980s and 90s in particular. They've got stacking bookcases. They've got office furniture with the tacking. That's a very pretty piece, priced at $195. The prices on arts and crafts are not quite as high as they were some period ago. And so that's fun. But then they have other pieces that are completely different, like this hickory piece. Now, I would expect to see this in Kentucky because there's a lot of hickory trees there. This one is an old hickory rocker, tall back, American made. They've got $5.95 on it. It's really got to be a one of a kind. And not only because it was made by somebody, but because it was tall in the back. Most people were fairly short. So this is for somebody about my size to have a nice headrest. How's the travels been? I haven't watched your vlog in a couple of weeks. I've been out on the road myself. Oh, uh, where have you been? Uh, Las Vegas, mostly. Oh, yeah. everyone's telling me Vegas is suddenly this interesting place to shop. Well, I go, it might be. I don't know. I never do. I go every <laughs> year for a, a couple of weeks uh, for the World Series of Poker. Oh, fun. Are you good or do you just go to watch? I, I'm a good amateur. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> He's got some really neat stuff here. He sells at Packwood and a bunch of other places. He does estate sales in the Tacoma area. And he's had some really good ones that I've been to. He's got a great selection of little cast iron toys, 1920s and 30s here. Especially, look how clean that bus is. And it's based in a pure Cerro because of those big headlights that come off the fenders. So this is about 1930. The Century of Progress, these were sold at the World's Fair in Chicago, courtesy of Greyhound Lines, because a lot of people ended up getting there, and it's marked GMC because they were sponsors. These folks have really nice, really top condition old Coca-Cola signs, Byerly's, which is out of L.A. with the orange there. The old Coke machine that you see there, these are all genuine. And that really makes a big difference. You're going to see prices like the little buyer leaves here. I think we've got $4.95 on the thermometer. Here's an old Buster Brown by O'Call. He was the artist. He did a cartoon called The Yellow Kid around 1900. And then Brown Shoe Company wanted a mascot. So he came up with Buster Brown for them. They hired a kid to be Buster Brown and tour the country. This one's from about 1910, and it's priced at $8.95. It's hard to find this stuff now. And then these old signs that sat out in front of the gas station that are double-sided, 1920s and 30s era, you're looking at three to 4,000 on a lot of these. So they've got some really incredible stuff. One fun thing with this show is there is a lot of vintage fashion. This is a vintage market, and so we have a lot more vintage than we might ordinarily see. I'm not going to go in because, again, the booths are not open, but there's a lot of good 60s prints you can see popping up. I also see some cute, uh, look at that second rack, the one in the middle there. So there's some fun 60s 
flower power stuff and then you see some lace cuffs and edges there, those are going to be either 1930s era or 19 teens. And you can see she's got some of the 19 teens towards the left of the display on the back wall that you can spot there. Beautiful pieces. She's got some flapper dresses. This is Deja Vintage. And then she's got one of these big, poofy formal gowns. That one is priced at 150 from the 1950s in the blue there. Just really fun stuff. And it's fun because we see a lot of the people who collect this stuff come to the show wearing these type of pieces. So that makes it even more entertaining. A very nice large size Hopi Pacino belt. There really are a lot of people interested in those now. And this end of the trail is by Austin Products and it looks like bronze, but it's not. It's chocolate. A very good likeness at $148. An original Hawaiian ukulele. That's really cool. And aren't these fun? Brayton Laguna made the baby Ferdinand. That was for Ferdinand the Bull in the Disney cartoons about 1940, priced at 95. Most of the pieces were done by American Pottery, but what Brayton Laguna did do some of the Disney. You see a bunch of the Pluto figures there. Pluto's my favorite Disney figure. My friend Dennis is here. He's just walked away from his booth, but that's okay. He knows me. He'll come yell at me if he doesn't want me out. <laughs> These are Francoma Ada Clay. This jar is Art Deco 165. These little round designs were inspired by John Frank's wife, Grace. Eventually, she did a line of her own called Grace Tone. And so this is 1939, a very early piece for them. Their early Art Deco pieces sell for good money because you just don't see them very often. I'm going to pull back and show you this whole booth, though. Because if you like dinnerware, if you like glass, if you like flamingos, this guy has such a fun, colorful goof. Look at all the Blanco glass here. He's got fan bases. He's got a lot from the Matthew Carter design era, which is starting to be really collectible. That's when they had the square logo, which is the 1980s and 90s primarily. And then he's got some nice threaded pieces. Now this seafoam color here, this is a 1950s color. He also has this very pretty art glass leaf. This is for Telly Tosa, it's Italian glass. He's got 450 on this piece. And look at this fun fish tank with the stand from about 1930 at 475. It's just hard to find the fish tanks. This dealer has a lot of family rose in her case. This is also from China. Oh, these are rose medallion, actually. A little different pattern because it's the flowers and not the figures. Family rose has more of the figural in it that the similar colors. These are late dynastic. So we have the 15 inch platter, for example, here priced at $9.75. You see 20th century versions of these. They tend to be harsher in their colors and not as well painted. For some folks, you have a very beautiful French interior. And this is just full of gorgeous furniture. And a lot of people, when they think antiques, this is what they think of, and you can certainly see why. Those wall sconces are quite fantastic in the back there. And I think it's all right to go in here. They don't have it blocked. They're not here yet, but I just really would like to show you these. $4.95 for the electrified pair here. Those look like they're French from about the 1920s. The Chinese vase in the middle here is 235 This is... Chinese, it's got a majolica type finish, so it was probably made for the Western market about 1900. These gilded bronze candelabra are beautiful. These are French from about 1840, and they're priced at $600. Just gorgeous, and you see the very formal presentation here. 
And then on this table next to it, we have something called Chinese export. A lot of times when you see these European looking designs that have press and such, these were actually made in China and exported. And the, ho the house in England, a lot of these were royalty would have their crest commission. They would send the design to China and then it would be sent back. Usually it took about six months to paint the entire set of China. So this leaf dish is priced at 165. If you see old China with crests on it and it's not transferware, not decals, but hand painted, look carefully because you might have a piece of Chinese export. This is another thing that sometimes has floated through estates so long that nobody in the family realizes how old they are. So there are sleepers out there. And then they have a wonderful selection of little tortoise shell boxes and keepsakes here. I, again, were before the opening, so I'm not going to pick them up and look at prices because I don't want to offend the dealer by being nosy into their stuff when they're not here to watch. But it's a very pretty space. And for people who really like true antiques, it's nice to see this because, you know, when you hear vintage markets, sometimes you think, well, it's going to be a bunch of old clothes and vinyl records and there's certainly lots of those here but then to see something as wonderful and beautiful as this you realize this is a serious antique show well this is my friend russ and he is from california he's up doing this show and he is a specialist in shelley china and he said he sold a bunch of trios and two coffee pots right before the end of the show yesterday so there aren't as many to show some of the old Shelley patterns still sell for really good money, and I wanted to show you a big selection of his because he's got great pieces, interesting patterns, and you notice it's not a whole lot of dainty blue, which is what you see a lot of. The dainty patterns are more widely known, but here's this wonderful jug, and that one is uh, 187.50. The three bears, they didn't do a lot of juvenile wear. Now here's the dainty pattern that we see more often, that's the blank without the decoration. You've got 52 on the cream and sugar. And notice that's a less expensive pattern. It was probably their most popular, so they made more of it. Here's some other pieces in both the dainty blank and the other blanks. But it's really beautiful stuff. The quality is just so great. Here's the trios. This is how they would come. It was for your, your cup and saucer. And then the third part of the trio was your tray to put your biscuits or your cookies on for tea time. And these are more desirable if you have all three pieces to sell at once. And you see prices starting in the $50 range on those. They also specialize in Heise. And Heise is a wonderful glass company that a lot of younger collectors may not be familiar with because they went out of business in 1957, but they did some really interesting etched patterns. Tally Ho is the one here with the carriages on it. And this one is the Spirit Warrior. This is an artist design piece. Really fun stuff. They also have a neat selection of opera glasses this time. And these are early 1900s. Most of them have French optics. I especially like this one with the painting on the side, the scene. That's really pretty. And they're pricing in the 100 to $150 range. I won't show this up close because I'm respectful of the fine jewelry dealers. They're very understandably concerned about not having their stuff um, photographed up close because of the danger of fakes and forgeries. But I did want to show that there is that here. And then next to them, my friend Shelly and her husband who deal in really wonderful pieces. Let's show some 18th century porcelain because you'll see some differences between this and the 20th century. First of all, it's all hand painted, so you're going to see more evidence of hand painting and more free form to the design. The handles are well shaped, but they look just a little less precise because they were not done by a machine. You can see, for example, the ribbon edge on this piece sort of undulates and varies quite a bit. It's not a solid exact pattern. So those are things to look at if you're not sure if you're looking at a really old piece of porcelain or not. Those are some clues. And some of these old porcelain pieces are still quite valuable. There were various makers who were highly regarded. And because of that, 
you'll see some good prices on these and sometimes these slip through estate sales where they've been in the family so long that nobody realizes how old they are. I like to show these little harlequin dishes. These match the harlequin dinnerware pattern and they don't look like it because they don't have concentric rings. They have these spiral, like a spiral craft design. I think they're really neat looking. They're only twelve fifty each, but they're a sleeper because a lot of times people who have harlequin don't realize these go with them and so they price them cheaply. I showed you what I could of the show. It was great, it was busy, and then it was over. So I'm sorry I couldn't show you more. Maybe you'll just have to come see it for yourself. It was really fun. I wanted to sign off with my friends who have the great merchandise that I didn't get to show you, but they still have their Madame Butterfly opera poster here. And isn't that beautiful? The Grand Opera by Pucci. That is just a really wonderful piece. So I'm gonna sign off for now. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us. Look at this great guy. I'm so sad I didn't get to show you more of the show, but you'll just have to come out and see it for yourself. They're going to be back here again in October. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below. Click the bell to be notified when new videos upload. Leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now.